Want to achieve network marketing success? Then you're in the right company. Hello, and welcome to Leave Nothing to Chance, hosted by networking marketing giant, John Solider. Learn everything you need to know about the network marketing space from somebody who's actually done it. Join us every week for front row seats as we feature some of the finest and most successful personalities in network marketing. Leave nothing to chance. Join us now. Well, welcome everybody to uh, Leaving Nothing to Chance podcast. This is John Soliter, and I am really, really pleased today to introduce to you a good friend of mine, Denise Stevens down in Houston. Denise, how are you today? John, it's another day in Houston, 92 degrees, but doing fantastic. 92 is good after what we've been through all summer, right? We'll take that. I, I think I need to get my winter coat out, John. <laughs> That's what it feels like up here. It was 74 this morning. So it was like, wow, that really, really felt good, you know? So, well, well Denise, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about, but let's just start at the top. What did you do before MLM? John, I was a software engineer. I spent 18 years at a major aircraft subcontractor uh, working in the IT department. I uh, started actually in the mail room and I wanted the opportunity to program and I uh, was given the opportunity. I went and took a, a programmer aptitude test. Now you've got to go back with me into the 80s and uh, passed it with fine colors, which said nothing but I thought logically. So that, that's where I started. I was a software engineer uh, for uh, 18 and a half years and continue to use those skills today. Wow. It's, it's very unusual. I think you were the first software engineer that I've interviewed that has gotten into network marketing in a big way. It's kind of, kind, of, kind of ironic. Although I did, I will say this, I did interview a friend of mine who's not in network marketing, but is an electrical engineer a few weeks ago and uh, just a fascinating guy. So anyways, you're a second engineer, but the first one is actually in the network marketing industry. So let's talk about why in this current crazy economy, you know, $4 gas and, you know, I, I paid $2.49 for cantaloupe, for two cantaloupe last night at Whole Foods, et cetera, et cetera, right? We don't you know, need to tell anybody listening to us that the economy's not in great shape wherever they're living, right? Because the show's international, but it uh, seems like, uh, unfortunately, it seems like the entire world is in the same mess that we are here in the U.S. But why should people now look at that, you know, plan B or that side gig or that side hustle or whatever people want to call it, whatever the contemporary term is. I still call it a plan B. I think you probably do too, but some of the younger people call it these other things, but it's the same thing. It's that, that extra way to bring some money into the household on a monthly basis. Why should they look now? Well, you know, John, I learned years ago, and this is well before what we're uh, enduring today, but when I wanted something, I, I had the ability in the industry to make the money that day to pay for what I wanted to buy that day. So when I finally figured that out, I thought, wait a minute, I'm engineering by day and I'm making money by night. So if I wanted to make money, say I wanted a $200 dress, I knew I had something I could make for 200 that would offset it. So that kind of turned what my job was into job. My job was creating more money for me because I wasn't spending what I was making on what I wanted. I, this opportunity created an avenue for me to create the money for everything I was spending. So I thought, this is incredible. So if I can make $50 or $100 a day, if I really put some mindset behind it, what can I turn this thing into? So I learned that very early on. So it, if nothing more, it's no different than someone in today's world running an Amazon run or a DoorDash run or a quick like cash thing. The difference here is that in our industry, you're able to duplicate that and help others do the same. And as a result of being a great coach or a great mentor, heck, the sky's the limit. So I can't do that in DoorDash. I can't do that with those. That, that's based on my effort alone. So that's what I learned very, very early on, John. And, and, and it's really interesting because you were coming from a traditional industry, right? In, in, in aircraft, you were coming right. from a professional background, obviously software engineering. And so you were not the normal person, quote unquote, getting in network marketing. 
And yet, even you had that need to say, hey, when I need something, your, your, your kids were still fairly young then, I believe, uh, when you started and you said, hey, you know, they need baseball lessons or piano lessons or orthodontist and we need to pay for it. And these bills pop up. You were able to, to figure out a way to do that on a consistent basis that eventually led to building a very sizable income and organization. You know, John, you're exactly right. And the one thing about that approach or my need was even though we had a great job, we had great incomes, you're right, but I had great debt and I was not unlike most people, okay? And I think one of the things for me is the day that I realized that we were, we were flying in from Hawaii on a red eye flight. And you know, in the Dallas Fort Worth area, we came in on the south entrance to DFW. And it was about five minutes till seven. I'll never forget it. And I was in the middle seat. Lloyd was next to the window. And I looked out the window, John, and all I could see was a, a sea of red tail lights. Mm. And I looked at Lloyd and I said, You cannot tell me that all of these people are that excited to get up at four, five, or six in the morning and wait in this traffic. John, they just didn't know better. And so I had really, I was still working at that point in time, but I thought, I can do this. I need to be a messenger of hope to help these people realize there may be a better way. You know, there's nothing harder than getting up at alarm clock at four, five, or six in the morning and waiting in traffic an hour to get to work in Dallas, Fort Worth area to me. <laughs> I went to the airport to pick my uh, my daughter up two weeks ago, uh, Labor Day Friday, Friday before Labor Day. And she was on an early flight from L.A. She's living out there. And I thought the same thing. They could people sit in this every single day. They don't know any better. And they really don't believe us, which is great because it gives me my next question. So let me give you this hypothetical. Pre-pandemic, you have a uh, family down the street. And this is a hypothetical family, but it's obviously it could be a very real family. And it's a young lady who's now about 25. Went to college as you and I did, right? Had all kinds of hopes, dreams, expectations. Did her schoolwork, worked hard, probably has school loans she's paying back. And... Her mom, who she lives with, is about 60, about, you know, my age. And um, mom was getting to the finish line work-wise, right? You know, pre, pre-pandemic, you know, okay, starting to think about what am I going to do when I don't have to show up at work or sit with those traffic lights, you know, all day uh, to get to and from. You know, was looking forward to spending time with the grandkids and her play golf or mahjong or whatever she was going to do in her retirement years. And all of a sudden, we know what happened about February 2020. And um, prior to that, you would talk to them about the MLM industry, the network marketing industry, the direct selling industry, whatever you want to call it. It's all really the same thing. And you'd talk to them and they were like, oh, Denise, you know, that's that's not really for us. And for whatever reason, they, they, they maybe looked down on it. They didn't understand it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And all of a sudden, they start to look down the street and they say, you know, Denise and Lloyd, they work from home. Hmm. Two o'clock in the afternoon, you know, they're out in the front yard having lunch. They're around the house. They obviously figured something out that we didn't. So here we are, latter part of 2023. They say, you know what? They get the, the, the gumption up to come down the street, knock on the door and say, okay, Denise, we're open now. Why now versus then should they look at the direct selling industry? Well, John, for one thing, like you said, the first question, extra money, money that is in your control. If you do the work, you get paid. Okay. That's something I saw similar in my former life. I was, we were always subjected to possible cancellation by government contracts. Okay. Our destiny was in the hands of the government. And instead, just like this situation you're talking about with the mother and the daughter, their destiny was in the hands of a company. They will tell you when you need to be back at the office versus we just we never missed a beat in this industry. We were well accustomed to Zooms. We were well accustomed to get up in the morning. If I had a meeting, we would get ready. You know what I'm saying? We did our meeting right there over Zoom. We didn't have to learn anything new. So if we didn't learn anything from COVID, this is an as-you-go business, as-you-are business. And when you can find a company that offers a good or a service that you believe can help other people, 
we have a moral obligation to share that. It's not, you know what I'm saying? So COVID, the, the, the jobs during the COVID uh, ordeal, John, they didn't care about one thing and that was meeting what meeting the requirement to shut it down and get everybody at home. Whether or not you continued to get paid was not up to them. Okay, hopefully most people did. In this business, we were able to keep going, keep building. In fact, our business was kind of fueled during that time because people were looking for alternative uh, methods of making money. So during good times in our industry, it's great financially. And during bad times, it's good financially. So we're in a no-lose situation if a person is willing to work. So for the mom and the daughter, there will never be the opportunity to blame a job or a company because something didn't work. The blame comes back on us. We didn't work or we did work. Do you see what I'm saying, John? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk, I mean, you referenced a few minutes ago flying back into DFW from Hawaii. Maybe that was it, but maybe there was something else. What would you say your best experience in the direct selling industry has been? One of the greatest experiences I ever had, John, was, you know, so many people think that in our industry that we're looking for everyone, that we're just begging for people. Well, I had a young man, he and his wife, and they, one, one of the gentlemen that I worked with in my organization, he called me, said, hey, Denise, he said, I've got a guy, he's on, he's on the verge of buying a major bread company, a major bread company distributorship, okay, where he would get a truck, he would get a route, he would be selling bread to grocery stores on a specific route, but he wants to take a look at what and how we do business. So I said, sure, let's have a conversation. So we all got together, uh, sat down, and <laughs> I will never forget this. In about 10 minutes, this is a gentleman that's on the verge of buying a franchise uh, for this major bread company. And he he pull, he reaches in his back pocket, John, and he wants to pull out his credit card. And I said, no, 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 no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a little fast. You're excited. I'm not. One thing I want you to understand is I have to make sure before I take that credit card that you understand what your job is and I understand what my job is. My job as your sponsor is to help you sell your product. Your job is to bring the people to me to help me sell your product. You see, there's a major misconception, I think sometimes, John, and that solidified in my mind. Here was a young man so excited, could see something so powerful, but at the end of the day, we had to, we were able, we were in a position Here's what I'm trying to say. We were in a position to say, wait a minute, let's make sure we're going to be a great partnership here. Okay. That is something that I think is somewhat missing and misunderstood about our industry because we always say it's a simple business, but it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I just always wanted to be honest with people. And that young man ended up joining our company. And it was amazing to see what happened because on the front end, we were able to take him. I remember that. It was so vivid to me, John. And it's one of my greatest memories was that I was in the position to say no. Hmm. Okay, It was up to me. I had to do what's right by this human being. And so giving him all that on the front end, I, I loved that example. It was it may be hard for people to understand why it was so significant to me, but we all own our own business in this industry, okay? And what we what we do with it is up to us, all right? And I wanted to always do business ethically. And I think that's very misunderstood in our industry because people want to belittle somewhat the industry when it's really not the industry. It comes back to us, the business owners in the industry. So I know this is a strange thing that was exciting to me, but to take that young man from that bread route, which he was going to drop significant money mm. and, 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 you know, be given a route to where a little bit of money was going to be exchanged in comparison, but he wasn't going to be given a route. Mm -hmm. He had to build his route. So, Great answer. so let's talk a little bit about self-development. How big is the self-development 
role been in, in your career and in your life uh, since you got a network marketing? She probably had some prior to that, I would think. But, you know, of course, our industry, we we live on it. You know, we talk it all the time. I know you and I talk it all the time off camera. But, you know, how, how big a role has that uh, played in your life? You know, John, it's it's invaluable. OK, first of all, with with the goal in my case, it, it was freedom that I was looking for. OK, and I had to realize that some things had to end for things to get better to begin. OK, I had to let go of some of the old ways and the old ways being constantly focused on work, work, work. And I had to develop those those skills to where talking with people, uh, self-development is priceless, okay? At the end of the day, you're selling yourself. So you have to become a product that someone wants to be part of, all right? I can't, uh, I can't put enough, enough emph emphasis on the fact that if you don't invest in yourself, no one else is going to. And none of the uh, corporate resources that I used or, or the corporate things that I had to develop during my, my work uh, at, the, at my job never developed me as a person, okay? In this business, it, it all, uh, your leadership, a, a team rises and falls on leadership, no question. you got to value people, not things, okay? And that is something that is so key. It, it, it is the most important element Every day I have a routine that I listen to uh, for myself. I call it my morning routine. It gets me in the mood and in the mode of how to help people. Because at the end of the day, every one of us, John, you, myself, and whatever company, whatever business, whatever job, whatever anything, at the end of the day, if we don't make someone's life better, there's no point. If we don't solve a problem in their life, there's no business. Mm. Am I right? You don't have a business unless you solve a problem. That is business. Definitely. Okay. And I love our industry for that very reason, because mo like yourself, John, stellar leader, stellar mentor, you finally get to find the element. As a matter of fact, when I left my corporate job, I told the company when I left, I said, the day that you value people to the degree that you value a schedule is the day the company was, will soar. And that's where I think our industry is very powerful. And those personal skills, personal development are priceless when it comes to that, to that arena. Learning to love people first and, and respect them wherever they are. At the end of the day, you cannot put in what God left out. Mm. Just remembering that. Love that. So let's talk a little bit about leadership because you, you, you've been around it. You know, coming from the industry that you were in, you were exposed to some leaders, I'm, I'm sure. That industry, you know, I know who you worked for. I know you don't want to say the name, and that's fine. I'm sure you were exposed to some good leaders in terms of, you know, former military people, et cetera, et cetera. And then, of course, network marketing. And, of course, in ministry, I know you've been very involved in your church over the years. So let's talk about leadership, Denise, because it's, it's such a, boy, it's such a misused axiom not only in our industry, but in so many others, so-and-so is a great leader or so-and-so is not a great leader. Let's talk about it. What makes a leader in your opinion? And if you want to talk about some of the ones, if you want to use names, great. And if not, you know, certainly don't have to. What do you want to talk about? But leadership is very important. You know, you just referenced everything rises and falls on leadership, right? John Maxwell. He's said that a million times. And, you know, I've been to some of John's seminars as you have. And, and he says that. And man, is he right on with that. But let's talk about it. Leadership. John, leadership, I think, sometimes is misused in our industry. Leadership is, um, in our industry, traditionally had been based on an achievement level, okay? Money. But I think there's far more to leadership than money. Leadership, you can't look back because you're not going that way. You've got to lead, okay? The, lead, the, the speed of a leader determines the rate of a pack. So if you're leading a pack down a dead end road, that's leadership. Or are you leading a pack or a team to a road that's going to benefit them? The money will come in time. What I learned from, I call him, that he changed my life in the industry. There are two of them, Les Brown and Charlie Regis. Les Brown, when he says, God will make a way out of no way. The day I realized that, a no became no issue to me, okay? 
It didn't matter. When someone said no to me, it just meant that maybe they didn't understand or maybe I didn't communicate better. So that took me back to self-development, which is where I still stay today, going on 25 years later. Doesn't mean I didn't make mistakes, but my mistakes did not make a life sentence for me to stay in that mistake, okay? You have to be able and be willing to uh, realize that if something didn't make me, something can't break me. Move on, rise above. If it's a mistake, learn from it and grow from it. Remember, you know, John, I think, I think being a leader starts off with being a friend first, getting to know how can I help you? Maybe I can't. Maybe there are some situations you and I both know that we can't help that person, okay? Uh, it may not have anything to do with something I'm building toward, but if I know it can help them, I can point them in that direction. So I always looked at myself like a bird feeder. If you've ever seen a bird feeder, John, how it sits out there and has mm -hmm. a bunch of seeds in it, I just would always teach people, fly in, get what you need and fly away. Mm. To me, that was the, the, the biggest form of leadership that I could give was just let them take bite-sized pieces of what they need to grow them that day. And then it's, I don't think le leadership is linear, John. It's as we go. Okay, you find this out, then you find something else out, and then you find something else out. And then in the end, you build, you begin... To, to be the champion that you were, because believe me, if I look back 25 years ago, I was not even, I wasn't even close to this. The anxiety in my gut of maybe I'm not doing enough, all of those feelings that you feel, it becomes a relaxed intensity. When leadership really resonates with you, you realize, wow, if I work where I am today, I'm making a living. But if I can work on myself, I can make a fortune. Mm. So maybe so great and well let's go back because i have another question I, I didn't write it in my notes okay but you started out correct me if i'm wrong you really started out as a customer in your first company did you not yes i did we were a customer and i think that that is the basis for every john i can't sell something that i don't truly believe is helping the person on the other end get a benefit to what they're looking for. Okay. I did. Um, as a matter of fact, I wouldn't even listen to my husband for close to a month. I didn't want to hear what he had to say. Uh, I came from a professional background. Uh, again, I had fallen victim to the misunderstanding of what this industry was about. I told him, I said, no, you go sell that. You go sell that product. I'm not doing this. I've worked way too hard to get to the level I've gotten to, and I am not doing that. So it, I come from a position, John, where it makes it a little bit easier for me to understand someone and their mindset. And it's not until I'm able to get that person to realize it's very selfish. Once you know of something that can help someone and not share it with them, shame on you. What that person does with it is up to them. Okay. I have a very keen ability. This is not boasting, John, but I can feel where people are because I was there. Okay. So I did starting off as a customer. I think it's the greatest place to start the greatest. And, and, and I love that. And let me just point this out to everyone listening. You know, we all want to build big organizations. That's why we got into network marketing, right? When we look at the business structure, but at the end of the day, Go back to the very basic concept of retail to recruit. Somebody got Denise on the product. Did you know the person well? Or was it a stranger that got you on the product commission? I didn't know the person at all. Uh, he actually uh, spoke with my husband. and <laughs> But no, I didn't know him at all. So Lloyd gets told, Lloyd, Lloyd is Denise's husband. Lloyd gets told about a product says, hey, hon, we ought to use this product, right? You initially reject it and then say, okay, well, why not, right? Okay, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, correct me if I'm wrong. You get on the product, you lost how much weight? I lost 126 pounds in eight months and four days. Okay, so somewhere in that 126 pounds in eight months, 
Denise starts to have people recognize that she's losing weight that have probably started to ask you for the product and say, hey, you know, what are you doing? Because I want to know what you're doing. Right. But you also made a decision that, hey, you know what? Obviously, you know, this stuff's working for me. And I, 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 as you said earlier, I need to share it with the world. But talk about that a little bit, Denise, because th this is where network marketing is. The FTC has made their position clear. If you don't have retail customers, we're going to put you out of business. Plain and simple. OK, that's where that's where we live today in the end of 2023. Will that change again? Who knows? But at the end of the day, that's where it is. So be it. We're under a seizure, as we both know. OK, so let's talk about your experience a little bit. OK, because I, I think it's really valuable that people hear, hey, here was a lady professional, you know, having a great career, making great money. OK, working for a huge company. But you were open enough to use a product, got a result and eventually built a tremendous business. But talk about that metamorphosis of how all that happened. Well, you know, John, we were looking, I, I've always wanted to do something bigger than myself. Okay. And when I started losing weight, I can remember it as if it were yesterday. I still have the journal and I still have a strip of the product in a baggie. You can hardly open the baggie. It smells so horrible, but it's <laughs> one of those things that means something to me. And as I was going through the process, I remember sitting on my bathtub, getting ready for work. And I thought, who am I to keep this from someone? So what that I'm 260 something pounds right now? Who cares? Who cares? Who am I? I'm losing weight. There are a lot of other people out there that don't want to be where they are. And maybe just maybe my story might reach them. So I started telling people. I didn't care whether they listened to me. They watched the physical transition. And John, I will never forget two things. Number one, a gentleman walked up to my front door. We we had a home meeting uh, every, it was, I can't remember the night, Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday evening. And he walked up to my door and he said, Un Denise, is that you? <laughs> I said, it is me. Come on in here. So that was one situation. I always felt, again, if I know something, John, that can help you, I feel I have a responsibility to tell you. What you choose to do with that is up to you. So when the FTC came down and has been so hard on customer-oriented uh, businesses, I think it's the best thing that could happen. Because at the end of the day, if they're not going to be a Denise or they're not going to be a John, then just be a customer for goodness sakes, if it can help you. Don't worry about my business. I have that well under control. The day I made that switch, it's like, no, I'm not inviting you into my business. I'm inviting you to look at a product. Mm -hmm. You see, it was very rare in my early days where people would even have that conversation. And I wanted to make sure that if I'm going to spend my time and my effort I want to make sure I have a partner that's going to value my time and my effort. That was so I think this path is beautiful for the way I always built my business. And John, I will tell you this. Our company had to make a product change uh, very early in my career. And I want you to know, I watched people lose businesses that had built businesses on the financial opportunity alone. And I to this day, to this day, am still paid on my customer business. Mm. To this day, and that is uh, 2020 to 2023. Uh, we are we are 23 and a half years later. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. There yes. You go. And and that and it's funny because that's kind of when when I started, which would be 41 years ago in April. All I understood was retail. So I understood. I didn't understand downline and overrides and all that other stuff. But I understood I could take this product out. I could share it with people. It was working for me. I had some product results with the product I was selling. And here I am, a young kid, and I start to retail it. And before I know it, I've got $800 in my pocket, <laughs> which in like 1983, I don't know what that is in today's dollars, Denise, but $800 for me was a lot of money. Let's put it that way, right? And, and to that point, the great distributorships in our industry were built where people said, hey, let me get the product out to the people that I care about. Let me share it with them. And oh yeah, the business thing, I'll figure it out or I won't figure it out along the way. And they'll figure it out or not figure it out along the way. So I, I love your story because it's phenomenal. You've kept the weight off. 
as importantly, right? All these years, you're in great shape, you know, and then you're tenacious about your diet and, and your fitness level and all of that. So it really, it, think about it, that stranger changed your life. John, it's immeasurable. Um, you know, it's funny because I was, uh, our son played college ball and I was actually introduced to the product. This goes to the power of being an introducer of a product to someone. I was actually introduced to the product in 1998 at a, a triple crown tournament in, in uh, another state in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, but I wasn't told that you could lose weight. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was because they didn't focus on what my need was. Are we not back to that? It was focused on athlete athletes at that time. And the, uh, one of the U S Olympic coaches, he always told me, he said, Denise, if I had told you about the product in 1998, I would not be working anymore. So wow. John, again, you do not ever know who you're going to be talking to and the life that has changed. I was nobody special. I'm still not. I'm just special in God's eyes. But I'm telling you right now, if you don't talk to them, someone else will. And if all they want to be is a customer, God bless them. That's what I love. Okay. So I hope this helps somebody along the way. I well, love customers. They're our greatest asset. It, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal, you know, story. And it's a testament to doing it the right way too, because, you know, you mentioned Charlie Regas. Charlie and I started in the same place in the industry where the company we started with was built on retail. And that's why they're still in business. 1980. Well, let's see. What is that? Uh, 20, 40, 43 years later. That's why that particular company that we started in philosophically, even though the people who started it are either dead or no longer with it, that philosophy of retail to eventually, hey, the people who really like the product and want to tell people about it, terrific. But if you don't, hey, just just take this stuff, right? Yeah. Be health, be healthier. <laughs> you know, love the story. So Denise, kind of in closing here, we've talked about a whole lot of stuff and we could go on and on and on with, with, with a lot of different subjects. But what's on your heart today? What's your message for these people? And there's people, let me just kind of set the table for you. We've got listeners in all walks of life. We've got listeners that are young. We've got listeners who are old. We've got listeners that are in places as far away from America as Malaysia to listen to the show. We've got a European audience, a very big audience in Spain and the United Kingdom, for example, that listen. Czechoslovakia, um, the Czech Republic, I guess they, they call it now. We've got a big audience over there. And of course, we've got a big audience here in North America and even in Mexico. And a lot of those people are hurting right now. Okay, The economy is kicking everybody's butt, needless to say. And we talked about that a little bit earlier. But what's, what's your suggestion for them as somebody that's been around this a long time, that's got a, a, a great education prior in, in another profession that looks at it and says, okay, what can they do to paradigm shift going forward in their business for the balance of 2023 and into 2024 and beyond? You know, John, I think I would, I think I would say this. Number one, love God. Number two, love yourself. And number three, never accept mediocrity. If you have not made it up to this point to the degree that you want to, just remember, have no regrets. Just do better the next time. No matter how hard the past has been, you can always begin again. That's the beauty. Finding, uh, the industry is prime for finding customers. Customers are the lifeline of every single business. If you've spent your past as the old model was to recruit, recruit, and recruit, your best recruiters will come from your customers. I changed so many lives in my, in my business. I think I was on level seven or, or something like that, John, when I started. And or, or, I don't even know where I was in that lineage. But I can tell you one thing. There were so many people that reaped the rewards of one lady, one former fat lady that went little, changed a lot of lives physically and a lot of lives financially. If your product is not weight loss oriented, if your product makes a difference, have great confidence because one thing I've always known, God will always put the right people in your path. Great advice. Well, thank you, Denise. As always, I appreciate you, my friend. Thank you for the opportunity. I've watched you. I, you know, I, 
I love your logo, leaving nothing to chance. And buddy, you have played that. You leave nothing to chance. <laughs> well, I even wrote a book called Leave Nothing to Chance. And I <laughs> love your I love your book. Thank you. And I wrote another book called Moving Up, by the way. <laughs> that book as well, John. And you can get them on Amazon and That's you can right. get them digitally and you can get them in Spanish. And and now somebody rewrote my book for me in Italian, apparently. So I don't even know how to get it myself. But if you're looking for an Italian, search the Internet, you might find it. But yeah, and, and, and Denise, it's just such a pleasure. You, 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 you light up a room when you walk into it and you're just such a blessing to people and you know we just love you and Lloyd to death and and uh all the best continued success and everything that you do my friend thank you john thank you for the opportunity many blessings thank you thank you for listening to this week's episode of leave nothing to chance if you want to know more about what it takes to succeed in the network marketing space join us again next week for another amazing episode for additional resources and to connect with John Solider, visit leavingnothingtochance.com. Don't forget to leave a review, and we'll see you next time.